In this video, we'll determine the IV characteristics of a metallic conductor. The conductor in question is a meter of resistance wire, shown here between two crocodile clips. The potential difference across the resistance wire is controlled with my rheostat as a potentiometer. Only a 1.5 volt cell is being used because one meter of this resistance wire doesn't have a lot of resistance. So this means that the currents are going to be relatively high. The rheostat is at its maximum setting. Notice where the negative terminal of the battery is. I haven't colour coded it because I'm going to be swapping the terminals later. This is a metre of resistance wire that's been strategically placed so that I can film it. If you're doing the experiment, you might want to pull it into a straight line over, for example, a metre rule. The multimeter is in series with a resistance wire at the moment as an ammeter. The ammeter reading is 0.25 amps, which is why it's in the 2 amp range and in the infused port. Now we have an ammeter reading, we find the voltage. You should be able to see the multimeter is now in parallel with the wire and the reading is 1.236 volts. If we move the slider down a little bit, we get a current of less than 200 milliamps, so we can use the 200 milliamp range. This involves swapping over the leads. The value there is 67.7 milliamps. with a corresponding voltmeter reading of 0.374 volts. We do this for a few more slider positions until we reach zero. Now we need to see what happens when the current flow is reversed, which just involves swapping the battery around. You'll notice now the ammeter reading is actually negative. Taking several readings yields the following results. To see the relationship, we plot a graph of current against voltage and draw a line of best fit, like so. The relationship is linear and identical when the terminals are reversed. Also notice that it goes through the origin. This means that I is proportional to V, so the resistance is constant. If we find the reciprocal of the gradient, in other words, if we find the gradient and then do one divided by that answer, we get the resistance, and the resistance value you get is 4.9 ohms. We can verify this by using the ohm meter. You can see the leads are connected to the ends of the wire, and the dial is turned to the 200 ohm range, which is the lowest range for the ohm meter. The reading is 4.9 ohms. If you look at page 134 of the textbook, You'll notice that there's this experiment, although a slight difference is I was using 28 SWG wire and they were using 32 SWG wire. The only difference between them is the diameter. 32 SWG wire has a diameter of 0.274 millimeters, while 28 SWG wire has a diameter of 0.376 millimeters. This has an effect on the resistance of the wire. If you read section 14.3 of the textbook, you can learn more about resistivity. It will also explain the relationship between the diameter and the resistance. You can try a different diameter of wire. If you are doing the experiment, remember there are several considerations you need to make. First of all, consider the effect of the resistance of the multimeter. Secondly, you need to make sure that there are good contacts. If the contacts are poor, that will increase the resistance. Finally, as obvious as it may sound, ensure that it is one metre between the contacts.